Okay, we're at part two, brothers and sisters in Christ. Examples of false liberty. Okay, one of the things that people use for, and misuse liberty for is they will say, we talked about it a little bit in the last one, holidays. Holidays. Well, we have liberty. We have liberty. Okay. Um, when they say you are lost, if you don't do it, you're sinning against liberty. When people hide behind it, when it has nothing to do with liberty, because oftentimes when you hide behind it, claiming it's liberty, it's because it's wrong, it's a sin, and you're hiding behind it, oftentimes, and trying to claim it's liberty. There's some things that you do have a choice in, but it has nothing to do with liberty. You're still sinning against liberty when you bring liberty into it, and liberty has nothing to do with it. I like to wear uh, hooded sweaters. Okay. You like to wear long sleeve flannels. Brother Brian likes to wear flannels. I see him wearing. My grandfather wore flannels, flannels a lot. Um, some people, some guys like to wear their t-shirts. You know, collar shirts, short sleeve. My dad does. Um, we have freedom to choose, but is that a liberty issue? No. Why? Because where is there a law that says you can only wear these sweaters, hooded sweaters? that say King James Bible on them, and if you don't, you get fined $100. There's a penalty. Where does it say that? There isn't. So you can sin against liberty when you try to grab something that has nothing to do with liberty and claim you have liberty, whether it's a sinful thing or something that's not sinful. Okay? Remember, we talked about liberty in its simple form. We'll go back through it again. There's a law. The circle is a law. Obeying the law is here. Disobeying the law is over here. There's a consequence to disobeying this law. Now, what's liberty? The circle gets taken down, erase the circle, and you can be here or you can be here. You have a choice and there's no consequences. That's liberty. That's true liber liberty in its simplest form. Let's look at some things where people misuse liberty. We talked about a little bit holidays. Bible talks about holy days. If you missed it, we'll read it again, Colossians 2.16. Let no man therefore judge you in meat, or in drink, or in respect of a holy day, or of a new moon, or of a Sabbath day, which are sh a shadow of things to come, but the body is of Christ. Okay. Holy day versus holiday, they're two different things. Why? Because where in the Old Testament is there a law commanding us to observe Mother's Day? Well, if you're Catholic, you know, I had to throw that in there. You, you, Mother Mary, you got to worship Mother Mary. They probably have a Mother Mary's Day or something like that. They have all these saints' holidays, and there's a Mary's Day probably. You know, they ordained it, but God hasn't. Where is there an Old Testament law, or even the New Testament? Where in the New Testament is Peter commanding us to obey, uh, observe a certain, like saying God's telling us to observe a certain day called Mother's Day? And here's the consequences if you don't observe it. Where's that at in the King James Bible? People keep trying to grab holidays and say, we have liberty and try to apply liberty to this right here, and it doesn't apply. Period. Now, if you want to celebrate Mother's Day, I believe, honestly, from my experience, my studies, most of the holidays is about making money. And I know people get on to you and say, I knew you would say that. Do the study. It's truth. Mother's Day is about, um, is about making money. Why? Because every day is Mother's Day. I have a mother who's a mother every day of the week of the month of the year. I call her up all the time to tell her I love her and thank her. You know? That's every day of the year. It's a man-made holiday to make money. So I still, send, I still call her up on Mother's Day and say Happy Mother's Day. It's not has nothing to do with this. Can it fall under this in the sense that if someone tells you you have to keep Mother's Day, they, they try to form their own circle that's not in Scripture, there's no law in Scripture, and they try to make up their own law and say you have to keep Mother's Day in order to be saved. Can they twist it and do that? Absolutely. They're sinning against liberty again. Saying you have to do something to be saved. When the Bible said, first the Bible doesn't say anything about Mother's Day, or even if the Bible says something about the Sabbath day, uh, the Feast of Tabernacles, um, the Days of Unleavened Bread, if there's certain holy days you want to keep, fine, and, and uh, worship the Lord that way. If, there's, if you don't want to keep those days and you still want to worship the Lord, okay.
and you're, and you're still worshiping the Lord, are you living every day for the Lord? Okay. okay. So, um, Father's Day is not there. The biggest one that keeps coming up is Christmas. I keep putting it off. I'll be doing a study this month on Christmas. We're gonna, I'm going to break it into parts, and we're going to go through Christmas, because am I against observing the, remem observing, yes, remembering the virgin birth of Jesus Christ and giving God glory for coming to the world and being born and coming in the likeness of sinful flesh. So later on, he died on the cross to pay for my sins, that I could go to heaven, that I can have a relation, personal relationship with Jesus Christ. There's nothing wrong with that. But when people try to grab Christmas and try to apply it to this, how does it apply to liberty? Where in the Old Testament is there a law? Because remember, Jesus was in the Old Testament when he was born. It was in the Old Testament. Where in the Old Testament is there a law that God says that this day, the birth of Jesus Christ, you're to observe this day every year, and if you don't, here's the consequences. Where is that at in Scripture? I point at this because this has Scriptures on it. Bible's over there. Where does it say that? It's not in there. It's not liberty at all. Christmas has nothing to do with liberty. And part of me wants to go off on Christmas because I have nothing. The more I look into it, if you have a love of the truth, you're not going to twist Scripture and you're going to be like, wait a second. Um, wait a minute, this doesn't line up with Scripture. This doesn't line up with Scripture. This practice doesn't line up with Scripture. They're claiming it's about Jesus Christ, but it doesn't line up about Christmas. And by the time we get to those studies, finish with those studies, brothers and sisters in Christ, you'll realize that Christmas really doesn't have anything to do with the birth of Jesus Christ. They just hide behind the birth of Jesus Christ. It has nothing to do with the birth of Jesus Christ. You say, well, I can make it about the birth of Jesus Christ. You mean you can put a Jesus stamp on it, and now it's okay? Gee, I wonder who does that a lot. Puts a Jesus stamp on stuff and say, now it's okay. But like I said, it's not a salvation issue. You, once we get finished with those studies, Brother Jesus Christ, you want to completely, I'm celebrating Christmas, I'm going to show you where it's sinful. If you do, some, if you do the practices that they say that a lot of, I've had brothers in Christ say, I do these things at Christmas, and I, I celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ. When we get done, if you still do those things and choose to do those things, you're in sin. It's not a liberty issue. You don't lose your salvation if you celebrate Christmas and do certain practices, but now you're sinned against God. It's a sin issue, not a liberty issue. Okay? But I don't want to go into it too much other than this diagram. Okay? Where in the law, when it comes to man-made holidays, where in the law does it say that you're to keep this day? God says you're to observe this day, and there's a consequence if you fail to observe this day. And where God's saying, okay, now I'm taking away that, that circle, saying there's no consequences because you have liberty, you have a choice. Where's that at with holidays? It's not there at all. Holidays have nothing to do with liberty. And oftentimes when people try to hide a holiday behind liberty, it's probably because it's not a day you should be following. Okay? A good example is Halloween. Well, we have liberty. One man seemeth one day above another, another man seemeth every day alike. We have liberty. Uh, no, you don't. Uh, Halloween, also known as Samhain, is pagan in origin. When we get into Christmas, you're going to find out it's pagan in origin. What do you do with it? I'm just going to ignore it. Halloween's pagan. I, I love my Halloween. I love dressing up. On, uh, I can dress up as my favorite Bible character. And then everybody comes dressed as Jesus, and that's a big sin. <laughs> I'm laughing a little bit because... That should be your favorite character in the Bible, Jesus Christ, right? Okay. But, you know what I'm saying? Easter, it's Ishtar, it's pagan. But they can easily come back and say, wait, 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 I have liberty. One man schemeth one day above another, one man schemeth every day alike, let every man be persuaded in his own mind. And you might come back by saying, well, you can't give God glory in it. Yeah, you can. We, we don't dress up as bad things. For Halloween, we dress up as Bible characters. And we talk about the Bible. See, we're giving God glory in it. Uh, Easter, we turn it into Palm Sunday and, and this and that. We try to Christianize it and put a Jesus stamp on it. You see what I'm saying? If it's pagan in origin, it's a sin issue. 
It's not, it's, uh, they're not a liberty issue, period, but it's still not a free will issue like I want to wear a sweater, that person wants to wear a flannel, that person wants to wear a t-shirt. We all have liberty. Liberty has nothing to do with it. Where is there a law that states you have to wear and dress a certain way as far as a sweater? There is still a law in here that's not liberty when it explains how a woman's supposed to look. Okay, there's three examples of how a woman's supposed to look. She's dressed modestly, and she's not to dress, um, wear the apparel of men, and she's to have long hair. Okay, that's not a liberty thing where you can choose to do it or not to do it. But I'm talking about if she wants to wear a red dress, this woman over here wants to wear a yellow dress that's modest, and this woman over here wants to, you know what I'm saying? One woman likes to wear a, a modest dress and that doesn't come up on the neck, and some women like to wear the ones where it covers the neck. It's really, you know, as long as it's modest and it's a dress because it's not the apparel of men, uh, you have a free, a free to choose. But it's not a liberty issue because there's no law that says, hey, you have to wear a specific color dress, modest dress, and if you wear any other color dress, here's the consequences. Right. It's not applies that some holidays, if you want to uh, 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 observe them, eh, I still think that you need to be like me in the sense that I was ignorant and then I chose to be ignorant. If a man be ignorant, let him be ignorant still. I chose to be ignorant, and then God kind of woke me up and said, hey, you need to start looking into some of these holidays and say, okay, is it God-ordained or is it man-ordained? Okay. Um, Christmas. Uh, like I said, I've had, I had a brother in Christ mock absolute truth. Here it is. Jesus was, wasn't born on December 25th, and I had a brother in Christ mock that. Who cares? Whatever. But someone who has a love of the truth would stop and go, wait a second. If Jesus wasn't born on December 25th, and he was born nowhere near December 25th, why do we celebrate it on the 25th? I mean, come on, you'd stop and think and say, why were we celebrating on the 25th? You'd look into it, and you'd find out why. It has nothing to do with the birth of Jesus Christ. But does it fall under this? Christmas doesn't fall under liberty. You're sinning against liberty when you try to use liberty and hide behind liberty when it comes to a holiday, Mother's Day, uh, Father's Day, whatever. It has nothing to do with liberty. Right? You need to stop sinning against liberty in that aspect. Okay, Hiding behind liberty. When you hide behind liberty, using liberty as an occasion for the flesh, you're sinning against liberty. When you're using liberty for something that has nothing to do with liberty, and like I said, Oftentimes, I've seen it so far. I've not seen one person misuse liberty just for you know, just something, something. Oftentimes, every time I've come across it, someone's trying to judge, justify something that's fleshly, and they're trying to hide it behind liberty, they're using uh, liberty as an occasion to the flesh. Okay. Uh, next one we're going to talk about is head coverings. I'm doing this for because uh, I've seen people do teachings and I've seen comments. They try to use liberty for holidays, doesn't apply. They try to use liberty for head coverings. Well, let's go through the Bible, okay? Where in the Old Testament is there a law commanding women to have head coverings? Okay. But first, I need to do this real quick. I'm, I'm going to walk away for a second. Give me a second. I'm going to try to keep talking, but we're going to be back here a ways. Okay, I wasn't gone that long. I have to I forgot to do this and get this stuff over here. But first, let's talk about what is a head covering, because people don't seem to understand what a head covering is. Okay, because um, they'll say that if a woman wants to wear a hat, that's okay. If a man wants to wear a hat, that's okay. Is this a head covering? No. Why? Can you still see my face? Can you see my neck? When you go to the, when someone is convicted of a, a murder, a crime back in the old days, and they'd go to the guillotine, they'd get what chopped off? Their head. Did they just get this chopped off from here up? No. Right here. From here up is your head. Is this a head covering? No. It's not. Is this a head covering? Once again, you can see my face. See my ears. See my beard. Not a head covering. 
Now, is this a head covering? <laughs> No, because you can still see my face. Now, there's some hoods we're going to talk about that would go, go down a lot. They'd look down. You couldn't see anything. That's a head covering. Okay? That's got to be out there. A lot of people, um, what is it, uh, certain religions out there tell women you have to have a hat on. It's a head covering. And it's not a head covering. Okay? Numbers chapter 5, verse 14, if you want to go there real quick. We're going to read some incidences about people covering their head. Now, if I'm wrong and I missed something, you want to put it in the comment, show me in the comment in the Old Testament, it's for the women, because that's basically what they bring it up to, is the women supposed to have, because we'll get to those verses. Show me in the Old Testament where there is a law stating that a woman, when she's out in public, has to have a head covering where you can't see from here up. That's called a head covering. You can't see their face. You can't see anything. That's a head covering. Show me in the Old Testament where there's a law that states you have, the women have to do it, and that there's a consequence if women don't do it. Show me. Right. I'm not above correction. But Numbers 5.14, And the spirit of jealousy came upon him, and he being jealous of his wife, and she being defiled, or if the spirit of jealousy come upon him, and he be jealous of his wife, and she be not defiled, then shall the man bring his wife unto the priest, and he shall bring her offering for her, the tenth part of an ephah of barley meal. He shall pour no oil upon it, nor put frankincense thereon. For it is an offering of jealousy, an offering of memorial, bringing iniquity into remembrance. And the priest shall bring her near, and set her before the Lord. And the priest shall take holy water in an earthen vessel, and of the dust that is in the floor of the tabernacle the priest shall take, and put it into the water. And the priest shall set the woman before the Lord, and uncover the woman's head. Okay. The woman is brought before him, covered. Her head is covered. Okay. And put the offering of the memorial in her hand, which is the jealousy of offering, and the priest shall have in his hand the bitter water that causeth the curse, and the priest shall charge her by an oath, and say unto the woman, If no man hath lain with thee, and if thou hast not gone aside to uncleanness with another instead of thy husband, be thou free from this bitter water that causeth the curse. Now I read all this because it shows in here that she, her head was covered. But it doesn't say in here that it's a law or head has to be covered. What if it was just part of this? Being brought before the peace, she had a uh, priest for this whole situation, she had to have her head covered. Did she have her head covered before that normally? It doesn't say, but it's a mentioning. I, th I think this was the only mention I found of a woman having her head covered. Now, I didn't put this in here. There's verses in the Bible where it talks about women covering their face. Uh, harlots, prostitutes basically, uh, would cover their face. And that's how you could tell the difference between a woman that wasn't a harlot is their face wasn't covered. Right. But a head covering covers the whole head. Because right. when you cover your face, some people would cover their face, the harlots, you could still see their eyes, but their face would be covered. Forehead, and you'd still see their eyes. Right. Esther, chapter 6, verse 12. Okay, we're going to go to Esther chapter 6, verse 12. And Mordecai came again to the king's gate, but Haman hasted to his house mourning and having his head covered. It's almost like a separate study, but I still wanted to go over it to give some depth to it, to, say, to show that I did look. I didn't just say, well, there's no head covering, there's no law or anything. I did look, and I found some interesting stuff I want to share with you, but we could end it right now because there's no law. Head coverings don't fall under liberty. Where's the law that says a woman has to have a head covering, and if she doesn't, here's the consequences. She's going against God, and here's the consequences. But we see here a reason someone would cover their head, talking about a man, is that they're mourning. Uh, 2 Samuel 15.30, we're going to look at a couple other examples of people covering their head because they're mourning. And David went up by the accent of Mount Olivet, and wept as he went up, and had his head covered. And he went barefoot, and all the people that was with him covered every man his head, and they went up weeping as they went up. 
People would cover their head and they would just be weeping and they'd be wailing and everything. They'd cover their head. You couldn't see from here up. Right. Jeremiah 14.3 right. Second reason okay, that someone would cover their head. And their nobles have sent their little ones to the waters. They came to the pits and found no water. They returned with their vessels empty. They were ashamed and confounded and covered their head. It, it, it says ashamed and confounded. Let's read another one. Jeremiah 14.4 Because the ground is chapped, for there was no rain in the earth, the plowmen were ashamed. They covered their heads. Now we see it again, the word confounded isn't there, it's ashamed. One another reason why people would cover their head is that they are ashamed. You ever notice, like if I had a hood on, remember, this isn't a head covering, but when people are ashamed, they tend to, they don't want to look you in the eye, they kind of look away and everything, you can't see their head. It becomes a head covering. Right? They're ashamed. Um, 1 Corinthians 11, 1 is what we're going to turn to. Okay? Now we're going to talk about the New Testament, why people get it so screwed up. But I want to read through the Old Testament on head coverings. Um, sometimes the uh, priest would have head coverings. You know, there's cloth you can have where you can see through it if the cloth is close. But from a distance, you can't see through it. Okay? There are certain instances that I left one out and I couldn't find it again. And I wanted to get this done and get it out after you know, going through everything I've been going through this month. I wanted to get this study out, so uh, there was a mentioning of a priesthood, a certain ritual that, not ritual, um, ordinance that uh, a priest would perform, and then when something bad happened, people would be re uh, renting their clothes and stuff like that. If these priests were in the middle of, uh, the Levites were in the middle of this ordinance, they weren't to do that. They weren't to uncover their head, and they weren't to rip their clothes. Okay. They're in the middle of something. Um, but let's get to the New Testament, 1 Corinthians 11.1, 1, and I'm going to explain it. It's going to just be straight to the point. I'm probably going to upset some feminists out there, but we're going to get straight to the point. And some of the guys out there, you might want to have to cover your head because you might be ashamed by the time I get done with this. Right? 1 Corinthians 11.1, 1, Be ye followers of me, even as I also am of Christ. Now I praise you, brethren, that ye remember me in all things and keep the ordinances as I delivered them unto you. Okay. But I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ. Remember that. And the head of the woman is the man. Okay. Remember that. And the head of Christ is God. Definitely remember that. But remember that whole thing, it has three things, three parts. Every man praying or prophesying having his head covered dishonoreth his head. Boy, it just said there that the head of every man is Christ. So if Christ is their head covering, why is it having his head covered dishonoreth his head? Well, there's two coverings a man can have. He can have Jesus Christ as his head covering, or a woman can come along and a woman can try to be the head covering of a man, and a man can let a woman be his head covering. You got so-called female preachers out there that they're the head covering. Okay? That's what this is talking about. When a man has a woman as his head covering and not Christ, remember what Paul said about the danger, one of the dangers of marriage, not that you shouldn't get married, but one of the dangers of marriage for men is that they will want to please their wives over God. Their wife starts becoming the head covering. I want this. I want to do this. I think we should do this. And starts going against the word of God. And you start caving in. And you start compromising. And she becomes the head covering. Not Jesus Christ. That's what that's talking about there. Having his head covered dishonoreth his head. Husbands out there, Jesus Christ is supposed to be your head covering. You're responsible for making sure the Word of God in your home is the foundation of your home. Mm -hmm. Next, verse 5. But every woman that prayeth or prophesied with her head uncovered dishonoreth her head, for that is even all one as if she were shaving, shaven. What's not having a head covering? 
I, I can be my own man. I mean, I can be my own woman. Yeah, I can do whatever I want. I, how dare a man tell me what to do? They don't want their rebellion. They don't, which is which witchcraft is, is um, feminist, feminism is witchcraft. It's women rebelling against God. They don't want their saved father as their head covering. Because when you're single, uh, I think I've said this before, women used to live with their parents. They, they were girls. They become young ladies. They become ladies, women. And they would live with their parents until they got married. If they never got married, they stayed and, and helped the parents out. Right? There was none of this, I'm going to go out and I'm going to go to college and I'm going to have a career and I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. I understand today everything's so messed up and you have to have an income because most people, they don't have parents, they don't have safe parents, they get kicked out because the way the world today is, is you're supposed to be a career woman and everything. I understand that. I'm talking about what the Bible says. Women rebel against their fathers. I can do my own thing. I can have a career. I can have my own life. How dare a man tell me what to do? You say you don't have a saved father, then your husband. Well, I don't have a husband, then a pastor is your head covering. A man is supposed to be your head covering. And it's talking spiritually. It's not talking about a hat. Mm -hmm. Now it starts going in to the, uh, trying to use a physical as an example. For if the woman be not covered, let her also be shorn. But if it be a shame for a woman to be shorn or shaving, let her be covered. For man indeed ought not to cover his head, for as much as he is the image and glory of God. Okay. But the woman is the glory of, of the man. People always attack me because I say, women, Adam was made in the image of God, not Eve. Adam and Eve were made in the likeness of God, body, soul, and spirit. But as we read here, the physical image, the physical image, Adam was made in the image of God. Woman, uh, but, wo but woman is the glory of man. For the man is not of the woman, but the woman of the man. Neither was the man created for the woman, but the woman for the man. For this cause ought the woman to have power on her head because of the angels. Nevertheless, neither is the man without the woman, neither the woman without the man and the Lord. For as the woman is of the man, even so is the man also by the woman. But all the things of God, but all things of God. Judge in yourselves, is it comely that a woman pray unto God uncovered? Does not, does, and this is where it goes into the physical. Okay. Doth not even nature itself teach you that if a man have long hair, it is a shame unto him? You know the natural desire of a man is to have short hair? People, uh, men should naturally desire to have short hair and have it. Okay. What about women? But if a woman have long hair, it is a glory for, to her, for her hair is given her for a covering. You know it should be natural for a woman to want to have long hair? I mean, something has to happen to try to talk a woman out of not having long hair. There isn't just, oh, I just don't feel like having long hair. No, something had to be done, integrated. We had the movies, the TV shows saying men can have long hair, advertisement, everywhere you go. You had to be totally messed up in your head, deceived, tempted, what's, what not, to say, I, I think it's okay for women to have short hair. I want short hair. The natural part of a woman is to want to have long hair. Right. Now, I'm not going to get into all the reasons why a woman might not have long hair. Right. But the point is, that's the Bible saying. It's natural for a man to say, hey, I, I, want, long, I want short hair. And they're going to have short hair. Mm -hmm. So it uses a physical as an example. But once again, where is there a law... That states women are supposed to have a physical head covering that's not a man, I'm talking about a hat like we were talking about, something that covers their physical head, that's physical, it's not spiritual, it's physical. Okay. Where is there a law saying that women have to do it, and if they don't, there's consequences, there's punishment. Okay. Now, 
like I said, this was going to be tough, tough for people, okay? Because uh, I said, men out there, if you're realizing, you know what? My, my wife or, you know, my mom tries to, because there's some men where their mom controls them and everything. Women are not to be your head covering. Okay? And if they are, you should be ashamed. You know, put on that head covering. You know, as we talk about in the Old Testament. Women, uh, the head covering is talked about here is a man. You're supposed to have a man as a head covering. Okay? Like I said, father, you, get, you go out and get married, it becomes your husband. Your father dies, okay, or rejects you because you get saved and he's lost. It's your pastor. Okay? You're supposed to have a head covering, period. Now, the thing about this that gets to people and also it's going to upset people is this isn't a liberty issue because guess what? It's a command from God. Women, you're to have a head covering. Men, your head covering is supposed to be Jesus Christ. Okay? He's the head of you. You're the head of your house. Okay? A woman's not to be your head covering. This isn't a liberty issue. This is a command from God. It's just the way it is. Okay? Let's get to our last one, which will be really quick, because you can't find anything on this. There's no liberty to this issue. Something that we talked about recently that I got into was um, uh, trying to witness and trying to let people know that I struggle with these, and you can't give God glory, you can't give Him thanks, you can't do it in the name of Jesus Christ. Hollywood movies, TV shows, and video games. Okay? You can't do it. But you'll hear people say whether they're playing an innocent game or not playing. And games are designed to be addictive. You can sit there and play a game for hours and hours and hours and you're just attentive. You can say, well, I have an alarm that goes off. If you don't set an alarm and you sit there and you start playing a game, you'll always, always play it longer than you attended, attended to, intended to. Why? Because they're, they're addicted, addicting. You don't get tired like you should. When you stop playing games and you go to do something out, after a while your eyes start hurting. You're like, why are my eyes hurting? Because your eyes don't blink as much when you're watching and playing video games. And then your eyes start getting dry. That's what I found out when I talked to the doctor. Same thing go with movies and TV shows. So you got to be careful. Even I have TV shows, not TV shows, I have movies that are based off of Christians' lives. You know, they're, I forget what you call it, like an autobiography or something like that. Um, but even if you watch, if I was to watch those back, the same one back to back all day, it'd start hurting your eyes. Because that's the way that is. It's, it keeps you from blinking as often as you should. Mm -hmm. um, so, people will, the whole point of me bringing this up is people will try to hide behind liberty. And say, we have liberty to do these things. We have the free choice to do these things. Okay? Where in the Old Testament are you commanded to play video games, and if you don't play video games, you're breaking the law, and now here's the punishment. People throw this back at me, and I don't mind. They'll say, well, where does it say that there's a law saying you can't play video games? There's a law saying you can't play video games, and if you go out here outside the law and start playing video games, there's consequences, there's a punishment. You're right, that's not in there. Why? Because it's not a liberty issue. You're sinning against liberty when you try to hide video games, Hollywood movies, and TV shows behind liberty. You're now sinning against liberty. You're misusing it. You're using liberty as an occasion to the flesh. But here's some verses that do apply. One of the verses these people hate when it comes to movies, uh, TV shows, video games, is 1 Thessalonians 5.22. They hate this. And here's the thing. They might uh, quote this right, but their actions, they're following the Bible perversions. They're not following the King James Bible. Okay? The Bible says, abstain from all appearance of evil. The Bible perversions will twist that and say you're abstaining from certain kinds of evil. In other words, there's some evil you can have in your presence, but certain kinds of evils in other words, you get to be the authority on what's evil and what's not, and you just avoid that. Okay? No. The Bible says abstain from all appearance of evil. Movies, TV shows, video games, is it a liberty issue? Or is it a sin issue? That's what you've got to ask yourself. 
It's a sin issue when it comes to these. Hollywood movies, TV shows, I, I'll say it again, I went through, I had over 200 DVDs. I used to collect movies in my lost life as a professing Christian. When it was VHS, it took up a lot of space, but I had a whole collection, and then I spent all this money upgrading from VHS to DVD. Okay, I went through all of them. Every single secular movie that I had, which is all of them, had one, at least one sin in there that was evil, the appearance of evil. One thing in there that was the appearance of evil. Oh, but it's just one thing in a two-hour movie, one thing. What does this verse say? Certain kinds of evil are all appearance of evil. All appearance of evil. Does it apply to this? Absolutely not. Okay? That's why I'm reading these. I couldn't find any verses in the Bible that say... There's a law. See, people will also try to grab all things are lawful for me, but all things are not expedient. All things are lawful for me, but I'll not be brought into the power of any. You'll see them grab that verse. And I'm thinking of doing a study on that verse. But in order for something to be lawful for you, if you look up the definition, what lawful means, there has to be a law, a written law, that says you have the choice. A written law that says you can do it if you want to. Where well, is there a written law stating that you can, that it's okay to play video games? Watch Hollywood movies, TV shows? Where is the law? We'll go back into the holidays. Where is the law that says that you are commanded to do a holiday? To keep a certain holiday that's not in Scripture? Where is the law in Scripture? There is no law where there is a consequence if you break that law. There is none. All right. So all things are lawful for me. Um, like I said, I might do a study on it, but when I was confronting some brothers in Christ about their video game playing, I told them, I said, at the time, I wasn't ready for that verse. I wasn't in my notes. And I looked at a brother, I hope he's a brother in Christ, and I said, hey, you keep saying all things, because that's the verse they kept going back to. You kept saying all things are lawful for me, but all things are not expedient. All things are lawful for me. All things are lawful for me. If that's true, I asked him. I'm getting ahead of myself. I asked him, okay, if all things are lawful for you, what does it mean by all things are lawful? And when I asked this person, he had the deer in the headlights look. And it's almost like you could hear cricket, cricket, cricket. And it was like, he, he actually paused and froze. And it's like, well, what do you think lawful means? And guess what? Yeah. <laughs> I had the deer in the headlights look and you heard cricket, cricket, cricket. I wasn't ready because I didn't look at that verse. I was saying that video games didn't apply to it, that all things are lawful, but I was clueless. I had nothing to back it up. He was saying that video games did apply to it. He had no proof and nothing to back it up. I've done some study on it now and I've looked into it. Something that's lawful means there has to be a written law that says it's okay, that it's lawful now. It was wrong in the past, but it's lawful now. In other words, you weren't allowed to do it. Not that it was like a sin and now you can sin. There was something, a law, that said you couldn't do this. And now, there's a law saying it's okay now. Kind of like what we've been talking about here when it comes to liberty. All things are lawful for me. There's still a boundary, like we were looking at food. All things are lawful for me. You can read, you can eat all certain things. But all things are not expedient. All things are lawful for me, but I may not be brought under the power of any. Remember, there's still a boundary. Your body is a temple for the Holy Ghost. You can still eat healthy and eat too much. And oftentimes when you see people are, that are, eat healthy, they don't stay physically active, and they eat too much healthy, they start getting a pot belly. Not because they're alcoholics, even though you can get that from being an alcoholic. You can also get that by eating too much food and not burning those calories. Even if it's healthy food. Okay, I've seen it happen. You can be brought under the power of it. Okay? But the food of what you can eat, there was a law that said you couldn't eat these things. Now there's a law that says you can. All things are lawful for me. There's still a boundary on what you're discussing when it comes to lawful. Sabbath day, holy days. Um, well, the three things we talked about in part one. We talked about... Um, sorry about that. Um, battery went out on me. As things get old, the battery's not lasting as long as it normally does. But bottom line, what we were talking about is it's a law. All things are lawful for me. 
It has to be a written law that said, A, you couldn't do something, but now you can. That, bo that, that boundary is taken away, and a new boundary is set, saying you can do it now. All, right? All things are lawful for me, but you'll see people grab that to try to justify movies, TV shows, and video games after doing some study on it. It doesn't apply to them. Okay, because where's the law that says you're commanded to do it, and here's the consequences? Where's the law that says specifically that you're commanded not to? But I can show you what we're reading here, okay? There's commands showing that you're not, okay, abstain from all appearance of evil like we talked about. Is there evil in all those video games? The thing is, is I haven't found one video game where they didn't sneak something in. Uh, and one of the biggest things about video games that is evil, appearance of evil, is addiction. They're designed to addict you and keep you playing. Okay. What about Colossians 3.17? And whatsoever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by Him. Can you give God thanks in these things that we just talked about? Movies, TV shows, and videos? No. Can you give God glory? Uh, 1 Corinthians 10.31 Whether therefore ye eat or drink or whatsoever ye do, do all to the glory of God. Can you do that? No. Is it a liberty issue? No. But they'll still try to hide behind liberty. Okay. Um, is it all things are lawful? A lawful issue? No. Because where is it written that there's a law stating you can, that you're to do it, a command to do it, or a command not to do it, and now you have a choice? It's not a liberty issue, and it's not a lawful issue. Right? So, we're going to wrap this up. Liberty in its simplest form, I don't took a while because I wanted to go through some of that stuff about head coverings and go through those verses and those three examples of what true liberty is. But liberty in its simplest form, hopefully you still got that piece of paper <laughs> you know, that you drew. Right? There's a law where you're not to cross, a boundary, a law. You're in the, you're, you're, you're confined within this boundary. It's a law. You're to do this. You're not to do this. There's a boundary. And you're not to cross it. And there's consequences if you cross it. Okay? What is liberty? Now we're getting into liberty. Since we're at the very end, I can do this. This is liberty. That law that was there, that you were, a line that you were not to cross... That's what liberty is. You can choose to stay here, or you can choose to go here. You can choose to eat, uh, avoid pork. You can choose to eat pork. You want to be circumcised? If you choose to be circumcised, now you can choose not to be circumcised. That law is not in effect. You've been liberated from that law. You can choose to do it, or you can choose not to do it. That's what liberty is. And people sin against liberty. Remember, the two types of sin against liberty. They try to re-establish that circle. They try to draw it back in, if you want to say, and say, no, nope, you still gotta, you still got to eat only certain meats. You still got to only do this or that. A law that's written in Scripture, they're still trying to hold you accountable to in order to be saved. That's the first way you sin against liberty. second way that we talked about is... They're trying to, they draw a line, and may, or they make up a line that has nothing to do with liberty and say, well, that line's been done away with. There's no line there. They make up an imaginary line, and they say this is a liberty issue. There's no law in the Old Testament saying that you couldn't do this, here's the consequences, or you're to do this, it's a command, and here's the consequences. There's no law, but they'll make up their own law. We have a lot of man-made laws that we talked about where people are making up their own laws, saying it's not a liberty issue because God's not ordaining it, saying it's a command. And now God's not saying, now it's okay, you have liberty. Okay? Two ways you sin against liberty. Okay? Misusing it when it doesn't apply, and using it to hold people uh, captive to false salvation, you have to earn salvation. You have to do this work in order to be saved. You got to keep the law in order to be saved, and nobody can keep the law. So, uh, hopefully, this has helped. It was supposed to be simple, but when I got done doing the study, it was longer than normal. So, I just want to say grace and peace from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all, and my love for you in Christ Jesus our Lord. Thank you for watching.